Hey guys, good morning. Happy Thursday. It's Daryl here. It is 4 a.m. here in Connecticut on the East Coast. All right, I want to talk to you guys a little bit. Stick with me here. I want to tell you about something that happened to me recently, and it pertains to, the, to, uh, to Trump and Trump supporters. All right, as you guys know, I'm an artist, a professional artist. I sell my artwork. Um, I have a friend that has connections that's been in the art, art business for decades and helps me get my work shown in the restaurants, uh, different venues in New York, in New York, in Boston, the Boston area. And we've been talking lately about getting about eight of my paintings. He wanted to take eight of my paintings and put them in various places um, on commission. And it, it sounded great. I was looking forward to it. A couple of days ago, things kind of changed. He, he has a couple other uh, potential buyers, potential venues that are interested in a different kind of art. So he, 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 he asked me that instead of, well, first he said that, you know, he, he's going to have to kind of take, take a break and, and not take these eight paintings from me. I said, no problem. I understand, you know, you, you know, his business is his, you know, his business. I understand. And he's helped me out so much in the past that I, I already owe this guy huge. No problem. Then I talked to him the next day and he asked that if I could actually go out and, and help find some of these other artworks by different artists to help him, you know, not only not take my art, but have me help him find artwork from other artists. And yeah, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be making any money on this or anything. It would just be doing a favor to help him out. And I said, no problem. And, you know, but in the back of my mind, as I was thinking here at, at night, um, I, I got a few calls from him on the phone, and I started getting the idea, like, geez, should I be angry at him for backing out? Uh, should I be angry? And then on top of that, not just backing out, but asking me to help him get artwork from other artists that, you know, as a favor. And part of me said, you know, wanted to, to hold a grudge, you know, to start giving him the cold shoulder. And there was a part of me that were, I don't know how to describe it, you know, when that, that dark voice inside you says, yeah, that, that'd feel good. You know, you've been treated unfairly, block him out. Give him the cold shoulder. Don't talk to him. He'll know why. You know, and there's this, this, this ugly little part of people, I think, that it appeals to, of going that route. You know, it, it's, it's like, yeah, yeah, you know what? It, it'd be easier just to not take his calls. Give him the cold shoulder. You know, and I thought about this some more. And this really who not who I am. Like I tell you guys, I, 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 I've really found it's beneficial to me to go the positive route, you know, forgive, um, under, you know, understanding, forgiveness. And I thought about this and I, you know, I, I've gone out and I have helped him and I'm not holding a grudge, but I thought about how there's a part, I think everybody has that part of them where there's that little voice that says, yeah, you've been wronged. You know what, you know, treat, you know, treat this person you know, give this guy the cold shoulder. You deserve better than this. You're being taken advantage of. Uh, you know, um, treat, treat this person badly. They're treating you badly. You know what I mean? This was more pervasive back when I was a, an addict. I lived my entire life like this. Back when I was an addict, it was all about what I could get from people and nothing about what I could give. It was all about how I could use and everybody, you know, I had been wronged. Um, it wasn't my fault that I was an addict. It was because of injuries, because the doctor prescribed me this or that, which isn't true. You know, I was an addict since I was a kid, since I was a teenager. But anyway, you know, and it was about blame. And there's a part of people, I think, that it, there's that little voice where it almost feels good. Like you want to go that route. You know, you, you want to just, you know, it's going to be, it almost feel good just to shut that person out and be mean to them. You know what I'm saying? And I started really thinking about that. And sometimes it's, you know, there's, 
as you as you do the right thing and just forgive and forget and um well you don't have to forget but i found forgiveness is a huge part important part of my life making amends was a huge part of my recovery um without these things i would still be using when you forgive people it doesn't it's not giving that person that you're forgiving you're not giving them a pass what you're doing is you're letting yourself you're letting all that weight of the negativity off off your conscience um you're getting past it it's more about what's it's good for the person doing the forgiving you know it's just letting go of it and getting past it um and i started thinking about trump supporters um i think a lot of them get caught up in this it almost feels good to blame other people to say you know what this is my time i deserve this i'm you know this president is all about me and and the people that deserve the hard working people that deserve this screw everybody else i don't care about the kids in cages they're you know they deserve it i deserve better this is you know you know what i mean and there's a part of everybody i think that enjoys it, it's it's truly it almost seems like an evil part of people you know you picture the devil and the angel and there's that little part of people where it almost it, it seems like in your head it, it would feel good to go that route when i when i had that little voice in my head saying to me you know it would just be easier to shut this guy out in some way i thought it would feel satisfaction to do that and plus it'd be easier you know i wouldn't have to do him the favor and i could just shut the door and he'll know what it's about and yeah that'll feel good and you think it'll feel good but it doesn't it doesn't it just gets worse you know when you hold that grudge it, it just builds and it festers and the person that you're holding the grudge on doesn't even quite understand what it's about and uh you think it's going to satisfy you and it doesn't and that's what i see in trump supporters you know it took me some time to think about this you know i was laying there thinking about it and once i realized what i was thinking you know about holding a grudge on this person and shutting the door and you know it's like that's not me you know and i know better i know better after these last 14 years You know what? I owe this person. This person has done a hundred times more for me than anything I've ever done for them, and that's not even the point. You know why not help somebody else out if I can? You know what comes around goes around. I, I truly believe all this. You know, if you're a good person, you help other people. It will come back to you. I, I am a hundred percent sure of this. And sometimes it's not always the easiest thing to do. Um, especially if you're going through a rough patch in your life. I I think, you know, we all get that feeling that we did wrong. You know, enough of this bad luck, enough of this bad, you know, bad stuff happening to me, you know, finances, relationships, you know, and you, you want to take it out. You think it's going to feel good if you take it out on somebody, and blame somebody and, and you know, you think it's going to be you get that you think it's going to be satisfying. Like I thought it'd be satisfying. It'd be e- somehow easy and satisfying to just treat this person badly. And it's not, you know, and um I really feel like a lot of Trump supporters have gotten pulled down that road where, you know, I I see I've seen on social media. I've seen uh somebody there's a rebel there was a rebel flag behind them and they're going, "You know what? Screw Black Lives Matter. Screw them. Screw uh and and the you know, and it, the anger in this person made me think. First of all, that person was I think it was fear I was really seeing. Fear of change was what I was seeing and it was that that negativity uh that sometimes you it's easy to 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 feed into um and that's what i see in trump as as the leader i see the that's the most in him these days he's he is constantly complaining the other day i don't know if you guys saw this but he said uh, nobody likes me 
because of the Fauci, uh, the situation with Dr. Fauci and everything, it's about two or three days ago, Trump said, nobody likes me because of the coronavirus and everything. Trump is, you know, he is a billionaire several times over. President of the, 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 the supposedly greatest, strongest country in the world. Gold toilets in his penthouses, 17 golf courses, and he plays the victim constantly. You know, nobody's been treated worse than me, you know, and he is the ultimate example of this negativity where he always feels he's being wronged and he deserves more, you know? He's done so much and he deserves to be treated better and, and then he takes it out on other, you know, everybody else, the people that he feels don't deserve it. It's that negativity. I really feel that, that Trump and his supporters, not even intentionally, I don't think, but have gone down that road. And I think it's a hard road to turn around from. You know, too, with me, you know, it, it took a long time and, and getting into recovery and learning a whole new way of life and rebuilding myself from the ground up, getting to know myself again. Uh, before I started to understand, um, just letting stuff go, forgiving people, um, doing the right thing, helping others before you help yourself. And it comes back to you tenfold. It always does. It always does. Um, but it's easy. It's easy to give in to that sometimes. You can call it what you want. You can call it evil. You can call it just human nature, laziness, fear. Um, you can you say it's God and the devil, you know. But it's there. It's there. And I really feel that uh, the nation got caught up. Some of the nation got caught up in this negativity with, with Trump. And he's, he's, he's the, I see why he's the leader, the prime example of this, this ugly side of people, you know, always feeling wronged, always feeling like the victim, always feeling like they deserve more. Like I said, he owns 17 golf courses, a billionaire seven times, 17, a billionaire several times over. And he still feels like he's the most mistreated person on the planet, you know, that he deserves so much more, you know. It's, it's an empty way of life. It really is. And it's unfulfilling. And you really think it's going to be, it's, you think you're pursuing justice for yourself. But it's not. It's empty. You know, it's empty. Um, justice and good things come to people who do the right thing, who, who do good for others, who help others. I, I truly believe that. All right. You guys have, I hope, I hope I made sense here. You guys have a good Thursday.